You're listening to Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Thank you for tuning in for this Unity Partner Program. Unity Online Radio partners with spiritual leaders from organizations whose mission and messages complement Unity's. We are pleased to bring you this program on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Welcome to Living on Purpose with psychology doctoral candidate Jesse Harriet from Atlanta, Georgia. Are you ready to make the switch? A switch from barely living to living on purpose. During the next hour, you will discover principles to help you live a fully functioning, conscious, and purposeful life. The all is mind, and so are you. Let's live on purpose. Now, here's your host, Jesse Harriet. Thank you so much, folks, for tuning in to this week's episode of Living on Purpose. I'm your host, Jesse Harriet, where the purpose of this show is to help you breathe a little deeper, um, to uh, become more and more your authentic self, as I always say, to awaken to creativity and the passion and the fire and, and the consciousness that's already within you. Um, this show, uh, we hope to be able to empower you so that you can um, embrace life and and laugh a little more and love a little harder, you know, and and explore life a little deeper. Life is an adventure, folks, and hopefully by the end of this show, you have a little more tools to help you um, carry out that adventure and explore what uh, Joseph Campbell calls the hero's journey because there is a hero inside of you. Um, Thanks again for tuning in this week. I don't want to... I'm going to the preliminaries or stay there too long. I want to jump right into what we have prepared for this week. Um, we have a very special guest. His name is Howard Falco. He is the author of I Am, The Power of Discovering Who You Really Are. It's a bestseller. He is a spiritual teacher and counselor in his own right. And I want to go ahead and bring him on so we can get started. I am very excited um, on this week, folks. So hang on and stay tuned. You're listening to Unity.fm Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Howard Falco, are you uh, on the line? I am. I am here. Thank you so much uh, for agreeing to come on the show. Um, I appreciate your time, and I know, like I said before we came on air, that it's early over there in Arizona. <laughs> it's no problem at all. It's absolutely my pleasure to be on, and uh, it's early, but it's never too early to talk about this stuff, so um, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I didn't read your bio on purpose because I wanted you to talk about yourself. Take us into your story. Tell us a bit about your background. Sure. I grew up um, in Chicago, in the suburbs of Chicago, um, and uh, came out to uh, Arizona to go to Arizona State University when I was 18 years old. Um, And my journey really started on this process to this information when I was a young kid, when I was 14, and and went uh, camping for the first time or, or went on a fishing trip up to northern Minnesota. When you grow up in Chicago, you're used to being around the city lights uh, your whole life, and you're used to, uh, uh, you're not used to seeing uh, the night sky like it is in, in the wilderness. And the first time I saw that was when I was on this fishing trip up to northern Minnesota. And what happened was I saw the stars in their complete nakedness, if you will, and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And having never seen that before, I'd never seen the Milky Way or the night sky in such awe, Um, a lot of questions were spurred at that age in my life. I I wanted to know more about the life around me. I wanted to know more about the universe. I wanted to know more about the world that I lived in. It wasn't like it drove my entire life, but it sparked a lot of questions for me. So I went through my normal life, went out to graduated high school, went to college, got married, got a job. Uh, that I wanted in the financial industry, um, had two kids, um, bought a home, and it was sort of going through the checklist of everything you're supposed to do in life that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, except there was one problem. Uh, the more I accumulated and the more I did, the less content and fulfilled I became. I became almost more discontent. I wanted more and more and more. I wanted to do more, have more, and be more. And 
that is what really spurred the questions that led to the information in the book. I got mm-hmm. to a point in my life where uh, I did not have the answers anymore to what it was that led to everlasting peace and happiness, to what life was all about. Right. Because I thought I was accumulating all these things. And as I say in the introduction of the book, one day I just threw my hands up to the sky, not being religious or spiritual or not having a background in, in any of that, and said, I want to know what the answers are. I am ready to know. And it was asked with a pretty profound sense of yearning to know the answers. And what I discovered, Jesse, was that the purpose of life is here Mm -hmm. to bring us the answers to our questions. Right. Because for the next four months, I went through two experiences where all those answers and more became known. And that was the, uh, uh, the premise for the book. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So that's, and you know that's what? a short I, story. I, <laughs> there's always a longer version, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, I read your story, um, like I told you before we came on air, I came across your information um, a while ago, about a year and some change ago. And when I, I read your story and read your bio, I was drawn to the book because of the design of the book and the title, which is so very catchy, but also your story. You seem, you seem kind of... I don't want to use the word ordinary, but you seem like someone I can relate to, you know, and, and, and well, that's people, you know, that's what, that's what people need, you know, someone that they can relate to. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's what's so exciting about this. And one of the things that when I came off the second experience that I, I was just, I, I couldn't wait be, to go out and, and share some of this because the whole point is that this information, no matter how deep, no matter how profound it gets, is not for any chosen few is right. for anybody who chooses and oh, wow. I'm living proof because I didn't need to sit with anybody over in India for years I didn't um, I didn't study theology uh, for, for 10 years um, you know nothing life threatening happened uh, to me that, that drove me to this state so it can come through any of those ways and it has for many people over the history of time Right. But it also doesn't have to. And that opens up the door to millions of people, to the possibility for millions of people who previous to this had thought, well, I listened to that person, but they've got a background that stretches, you know, this far down the page, and that's why they've known this. And, but me, little old me, I can't, I can't have that great understanding. That's what's not true. And that's what's well, so exciting. I- that is beautiful. It, it, it lets you know that all of us can have an awakening right where we are, uh, right on the level, if you want to even call it that, where we are. You know, it's not about a big I or a little you. All of us can experience an awakening in, in, within our own self right where we are. That's exactly right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it just it comes down to a matter of intention mm-hmm. and readiness. Oh, wow. You have to, you have to really, truly want the information, desire it, but more importantly than that almost, you have to be ready for it. Oh, wow. That's very true. Um, I want to jump into that, but I want to pause on that. What was the inspiration behind this particular book? Well, the inspiration was the information. The inspiration was the experience that I went through spontaneously. Um, The inspiration was how I saw it liberate my own self um, and how I saw the information start to liberate all the people around me through a greater understanding of their selves by this information. So that was the inspiration. It was as if, you know, I couldn't not share it. <laughs> I mean, I would you would have had to lock me up somewhere. If, you know, <laughs> so it, it's like it had to get out of me. It had to get onto the paper, and then let's see what happens with it. Um, so the inspiration was the liberation of mind for millions of people. Oh, or the wow. hope of that. The hope of that. Right. To borrow from the title of the book, um, you said, I am, the title is I am, folks. I'm the power of discovering who we really are. Who are we really? Um, based on, you know, your research and your own experience. Um, and, and what is that power, you know, that you're referring to and the power that lies in self-discovery? Uh, wow, we've well, asked two very, very big questions there. Um, uh, who we are in any given moment is who we believe ourselves to be at the deepest level. That's the only thing we can experience, and that's the only thing we'll go out in the world to seek to experience. Mm -hmm. However, 
who we are is anything we can believe ourselves to be, which is our true power. And it begins with the statement, I am. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a process to realizing those I am's. And sometimes you're in tune with the truth around you, and it goes smoothly, and the conditions come together that allow you to experience that, whatever that I am is. And sometimes you're out of touch with the conditions around you, and it takes longer, or it may not be possible in this, you know, in this particular lifetime because of the disconnect between who you believe that you are and what the conditions are in reality that will allow you to experience wow. that. So the more you're in tune with the truth of what's happening around you and what's possible for you as it, as it relates to who you believe that you are, the more you will feel fulfilled as you build the conditions on your journey to experience that. Oh, wow. So That's I guess that, Yeah, to summarize, Jesse, um, ultimately who you are at the deepest level is infinite. Mm -hmm. But your power comes from who you can believe that you are and what actions you can take to fulfill that belief. Wow. So you're not connected, right, you're not connected to who you were unless you think that you are. And that's Mm -hmm. what locks you into a repeating reality. Wow. That is powerful. Folks, if you are um, listening, I know you're probably out. If you're on your job, if you're working or if you're driving, don't pull over (laughs) if you can help it. But um, definitely uh, stay tuned to unity.fm. And um, at the end of the show, um, go back and download it for your library um, so that you can take notes because this is good stuff. Um, Now, uh, Howard, you said uh, a lot of good things. Um, One of the things that really caught me, you said uh, being into the truth that's around us versus being out of touch with it. And Abraham Hicks talks a lot about um, not trying to um, swim upstream, you know, watching how your life is flowing and following that, flowing in that direction. Could you, could you jump into that or um, uh, unpack that a little bit more for us? How do we become in tune with the truth that's around us? Well, you, you decide on an intention of what you want to create for yourself. And mm-hmm. then you watch what life brings you as it relates to you in the attempt to achieve that. Mm-hmm. And that's where you have to listen. That's where you have to pay attention. Because that's where life will show you what you have yet to learn about who you are as it relates to what you're experiencing and why you're attracting what you're experiencing. For example, I want to have a deep, loving, and lasting relationship. There's turbulence in your relationship. Mm -hmm. There might be several reasons for that in your current relationship. It might be because the person you're with, you're trying to put a square peg into a round hole, and Mm -hmm. it's just not working, but you don't want to acknowledge that yet because you are afraid that if you do acknowledge it, it means you're going to have to turn to being alone for a little while while you open that space up to the possibility of meeting someone else who will match you in your intention. And because there's a disbelief, and that uncovers a disbelief and, a, dis- and, and a, a lack of faith in who you are to go out and create that because you're afraid to go into that space. So you won't even acknowledge potentially that the person you're with is not matching with what you want. Or the person does have the capacity to match what you want, but you're so afraid to bring it up and have the discussion with them because, again, you're afraid that it might lead to something else that you're not ready for, that you never have the discussion Therefore, they can't gain the awareness. Therefore, they can't match your intention. Mm. So that's just, that's just one small example in a relationship issue. But it's the same thing in a job. It's the same thing as it relates to money. You have to pay attention to what the conditions are or aren't that you're putting oh, wow. together on the way to what you want to experience. Wow. Because any, anything that you want to manifest in life There's a process to it. Just like there's a process to, I use the seed analogy a lot. A seed is one intention, period, one powerful intention. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a navel orange tree. That's what this seed is, period. But for that seed to become manifest into a great navel orange tree, conditions have to be met. It's got to be planted in soil. The soil's got to be fertile. It's got to get the proper amount of water. It's got to be the right temperature. 
and it's got to get sunlight. But if those conditions aren't met, it can't manifest. No matter how bad it wants to become that navel orange tree, if the conditions around it aren't met, it's not going to manifest into that. So that's for more of an unconscious object, okay? Mm-hmm. But for us as conscious beings, we have the ability to wake up to our existence to see what our actions are, what we've been creating for ourselves, what's been working, what isn't working as it relates to what we want. And the more we're willing to wake up to it and face it without any sense of guilt, shame, or regret, the three poisons of the mind, the more we'll take in and and see the information that we need as it relates to our attitude, our behavior, our beliefs. And ultimately, the energy that goes out to our world, which is the only thing our world can respond to, and then the only thing that results in the energy that comes back in from our world, which helps us create what we want. And that's phone calls, doors opening, happenstance, coincidences where you meet people, all the things, all the synchronicities that lead to what we want. Mm. Oh, my God. That, folks, this is good stuff. Um, and this is good stuff, Howard. It, so you're saying state the intention, become aware of the necessary conditions in order to manifest the, uh, the intention, and watch your life to see what life brings you. And this will help you, in a sense, learn more about yourself. That's exactly right. It's, it's self-reflection is huge in this process. Radical self-honesty is what I call it in the book. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to be unafraid to get the feedback of where you are in relationship to where you want to go, whether it's with a job or relationship or money. And you have to face that fact, those facts fully, so that you know exactly what the next step you need to take. Most people dilute themselves in relationships. They dilute themselves in, in who they are as their capacity in a job. They dilute themselves as to what their situation is with money. Um, and that stretches time for them. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? This this is very powerful because it brings a, a practicality to, to to our spiritual approach and our spiritual practice. Uh, because, like I, I talk with some of the guests, um, affirmations and, and they are they're good, but they can only be helpful if if you know you ground them in practicality. And so, basically, what you're saying you're saying watch your life and and look out for the conditions because they will, in a sense, teach you and tell you what you need to know. But having that awareness is scary sometimes because you might get some hard truths that you may not want to hear. Well, what would be a harder truth? Finding yourself in the same position you're in 10 years from now or worse? Or oh. accepting the truth and being able to move on and create yeah, what you want? Wow. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there is not that. I think the, the latter would be the harder truth. Finding yourself in that same position in 10 years. And then, you know, it, it kind of sort of. Free, I hate to say freeze up spirituality, but then for those that blame God, you know, you, you see that, hey, it, the answers were there all the time, you know, but you have to wake up to it and expand your awareness. And I've seen it in my own life. You know, a lot of times I'm looking for answers and I'm searching and searching and searching. But when I get still, I watch my life, I realize that the answers were right there. And it makes me upset because <laughs> the answers were right there in front of my face the whole time. Yeah, and I'm not... You know, I'm not saying that this is an easy or a hard journey. It's up to each individual based on what they're looking to achieve in the world and what they want. You know, a lot of people can tolerate a lot of pain mm-hmm. and a lot of suffering um, before they're willing to make, you know, the necessary changes that will really fulfill more of who they are. See, that's how we get nudged by the universe. The universe is constantly nudging us and nudging us into more of our greatness. And we suffer when we believe the lies about ourselves. That's when we oh, suffer. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, um, we have to go to a uh, commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about that suffering part because this is very deep. Um, I'm Jesse here today talking with spiritual teacher, counselor, and best-selling author Howard Falco. When we return, we'll continue the conversation right here on Unity.fm, Living on Purpose. Stay tuned. It takes you to power Unity Online Radio. If you'd like to make a positive difference in the world, you can by contributing to this global ministry. Unity Online Radio relies on listener support to broadcast the messages of unity to an awakening world. To contribute, visit www.unity.fm and click on Donate Now. Hello, listeners. Did you know we've gone mobile? 
That's right. Your favorite Unity online radio programs are available on your mobile device. Now you can take us with you wherever you go. Using apps from Live 365 or Stitcher, you can listen to Unity online radio live or on demand. To learn more, visit www.unity.fm and click on mobile listening. From on the air to on the sea, pack your bags and come with me. Hey, hey, what you waiting for? An early winter rendezvous with all the things you love to do. Hey, hey, treat yourself to more. A little more summer, a little more sun, a little less work and a lot more fun. A little more beach, a little more sand. A little less stress and a lot more pain. Join your favorite Unity Online Radio hosts for Cruise in the Caribbean, November 10th to 17th, 2012. On this fun-filled Caribbean adventure, enjoy sunshine, exceptional dining, and island excursions. Feed your spirit with music, message, and meditation, plus one-on-one time with some of your favorite hosts. That's Cruise in the Caribbean, November 10th to 17th, 2012. To learn more, go to unity.fm slash cruise. A little more sunset, a little more sea, a little less do and a lot more be. You've been listening to Living on Purpose with Jesse Harriet. If you have a question or comment about today's broadcast, or if you'd like to join in the discussion, friend us on Facebook at Jesse Harriet or email us at livingonpurpose at unity.fm. Now, more Living on Purpose. And we're back, folks, in our second segment. I'm Jesse Harris talking today with spiritual teacher, counselor, and best-selling author, Howard Falco. Uh, to continue the conversation right before we left, we were talking about um, becoming aware of uh, the signs and the signals that are um, becoming apparent in your life and about expanding your awareness because once you set the attention, as the author said, and then after setting the intention, you become aware of the conditions. Watch your life to see what answers arise and what comes up, and this will help you learn about yourself. It's a, it's a process of waking up, and this is what we're talking about. So let's jump back into that because this is deep in itself. I think we could talk like an hour just about this subject here. Um, yeah. You mentioned the word suffering before we left. Uh, can you go into that for us? Sure. Um, suffering is caused um, anytime you believe a lie um, about who you are. And what the universe is trying to do uh, through suffering is um, is to wake you up to more of your greatness, to wake you up to more of who you really are that is beyond the limit that you have in your mind that is causing the suffering. So, for example, um, you're suffering because of a breakup with a significant other. Well, the lie that's being told is I can't live without this person or I'll never find anybody else or uh, they are what made my life complete. Um, those are the lies because you're greater than any relationship that you're having. Um, who you are, and who you are is capable of manifesting that a million times over uh, with a million people. So anytime we limit ourselves or if we, we uh, lose our job, oh, I won't be able to find another job, or I, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get this, not true. And the suffering comes from those thoughts, those limited thoughts. So that is why we get the challenges in our life. And really, as I've said many times through many interviews, um, what happens is not happening to you. It's happening for you in right. some way, shape, or form. And it's related to either an intention that you have and something you're looking to create, and this, is, this suffering or this challenge is trying to show you a condition that needs to be met in order to achieve that, or it's fulfilling a truth that you have about who you are. For example, I'm not good enough. If that's a true belief about yourself in some area, then that situation has been developed. You put yourself in front of the right person, the right place, and the right circumstance to validate that experience of who you are. So it's one of those two reasons. 
But that is how powerfully, how powerfully you are served by life and how life is always on your side. It's, it's absolutely astonishing. Wow. Uh, to pull a quote from your book, <clears throat> you say, and I quote, overestimation of ability and underestimation of limitations can occur in any situation you find yourself in. Um, and then uh, towards the bottom of that paragraph, you say each of these situations offer you a chance to gain the valuable awareness that comes out of the experience. These are some hard truths. <laughs> this is some strong stuff. Right. And, and what, it, what this really leads to, people want to know, how can I achieve what I, I want to achieve in the fastest experience of time? Well, the biggest component to collapsing time is awareness. Mm -hmm. And the biggest component to stretching time is the lack of awareness. Wow. Because with the awareness comes the understanding of a new I am. And with a new I am comes a new energy. With a new energy comes new thoughts. New thoughts lead to new, new actions. New actions lead to new conditions. And the universe swirls quickly when you change those beliefs about who you are. That's how fast your life can change. Mm. That's how fast all the conditions around you can change. You're but it's up to you, based on what is tolerable to you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So how do you define I am? I know Jesus would say it all the time. I think in Hebrew it's, yeah, I share, yeah, yeah. And it, what, how do you define this I am? There, there's two ways to do it. The, the, the way that I define it in the book, it is, I am is whatever you truly believe, whoever you truly believe that you are, mm -hmm. based on what is being demonstrated in the current situation of your life. That is the current state of I am for you. Now, the great I am, the greater I am, is infinite. It's, it's, you can't even speak about it. You can't even put words around it. Uh, mm -hmm. because to almost speak the word or put it into form um, is, uh, is to not know it. Mm -hmm. There's a quote from St. Augustine uh, that says, the best way in knowing God is in not knowing him. Wow. And what he really meant by that was it's a greater, more profound understanding of the nature of infinity, of something beyond um, uh, the material world, beyond duality. Mm -hmm. So that's the greater I am which is everything and anything, okay? But for a more practical level, your individual personal I am is expressed in who you are in this very moment. Mm -hmm. That's the only truth that, that exists. Mm. So when you talk about I am, because I'm looking at your book and I have it in front of me now, um, what does you talk about here is uh, positive imbalances. And there's a quote where you say uh, you're talking about this, this new I am that's being born. Um, could you talk a bit about that? Um, because, like you said, as you change your self-definition, you experience new thoughts, new awarenesses, and conditions. Well, in, in light of positive imbalances, that, that's what surges us to the positive end of the spectrum, creating all the positive emotions. Mm -hmm. It's like when we learn something new, right? We get excited. Mm -hmm. right. Um we get charged up when we're at a concert and we hear something and we're moved by a piece of music that someone's playing, one of our favorite bands. It's moving us to a new state of experience that we've never had before. When we ride a roller coaster for the first time or, or go on a new ride, when we fall in love or have an experience when we're in love or when we have a birth of a, of, of, of a child, um, those are the type of experiences, the creative experiences that push us to this more powerful, positive state. And it's by design by the universe to constantly have us create more and more and more possibility mm -hmm. to continue the propagation of the species, to continue to move ourselves forward in our awareness. Now, the negative end of the spectrum occurs when who we are, as defined by I am, becomes more limited. When we have a loss of love or a loss of someone in our life through their passing, and a part of us, a part of our I am, a part of our experience, dissolves. That's mm -hmm. when we go to the negative state of mind. Because we're feeling less than we were before. And that's, that drives the negative emotions. So that's how it works in, in, a, in a very short explanation, how your energy shifts from positive to negative. And obviously, from my perspective, one of the most sought-after states in the history of man is the state of pure balance because that's where 
pure clarity is that that's where all possibility exists mm-hmm. uh, when you're at when you're at pure balance, and as represented by by the hands coming together, you know, and then the peaceful. Oh yeah, case. and I'm happy you said that because um, a lot of our guests have been saying the same thing. There are even scholars in the academic setting that are researching peak experiences because um, they're saying that there are some side effects to peak experiences. And instead of, you know, living a balanced life because there are people who get caught up on the peak experiences and then when the pendulum shifts the other way, you can't handle it. Or it, it's, you know, it, it's already yeah, going to be it's going to be. But you understand what I'm saying? I, I completely do, and I, I'd like to talk in a second about that because it's an important distinction. So many people on a spiritual path are in search of the experience. They want to meditate for hours till they have that experience. They want to pray. They want to um, uh, whatever they do to put themselves in a place where they can sit in front of somebody until they have that wonderful experience. Mm-hmm. They're chasing the experience. That's what they did in the 60s. They got the experience, and it was temporary. Now, they got a glimpse through the experience, but they didn't have the framework when they came off of it to understand exactly what they experienced. And that created a conflict between the world in the late 60s that they lived in uh, sober and the difference when they were on LSD. But mm-hmm. so, so where I want to go with this is that if you constantly chase the experience, you're going to be looking for something that's temporary. It's not the experience that creates the wisdom. It's the wisdom that creates the experience. Mm-hmm. So the path is the self-reflection and the questioning that allows you to experience the realization of the answers that ends up producing a state that is called, quote, the experience. Wow. Because it's upon the realization that you shift into a peak state. And so it's really the path of seeking the wisdom, seeking the understanding that puts you in that state. But searching for the experience first is, uh, can be a problem. Mm-hmm. For many things. Man, this is amazing. Um, it looks like the conversation is really, really flowing in a certain direction, so I just want to stay there. I want to jump back into what we were talking about, about our life experiences. Um, these things and these signs and signals that come up, um, how do we uh, uh, interpret them and separate what seems, what seems to be the truth and what seems to be uh, a fact? Because you said suffering is uh, believing a... How do you... Uh, suffering happens when you believe a lie about who you are. How do we... Separate um, these these things that come up from what is true about who we really are. Very simple. The truth will be known in your state of mind mm. upon the experience. Mm. So, what I'm saying is that is what's happening offering you something that's leading you to what you want to ultimately experience. If it works for you and it's putting you in a very good state of mind and you're happy with it, then it may be leading you towards what you want. If it's not leading you to the state of mind, it's leading you to a negative state of mind, then there's an issue with it Mm -hmm. as it relates to what you're looking for, a condition that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Your internal guidance system is pretty powerful. The truth can't be hid, can only be hidden so long from you. Your gut knows the truth. They call it women's intuition. Mm-hmm. So you know deep down what the truth is about whether, whether what's happening is a signal for you in some way or not. And if you can be more specific, I might be able to answer the question more specifically. I... I, I I'm trying to get the answers out, <laughs> but I think uh, every time I try to get the question out, you go and you answer in your response. Because it, it, like I said, the conversation is kind of shifting and moving, and I'm following it. Right now, we're talking so heavily about life experiences, and this is very true because um, I've seen in the spiritual uh, arena that um, there's this need to want to get away from life. Uh, like uh, Bishop Spong always talks about this, we have this notion of wanting to embrace the all, you know, and, and, and embrace the divine, but forget about our humanity, little old Jesse or, or Howard, you know, and, and reach beyond. Some people go as far as changing their names, which that's cool, you know, but that escapism, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly right. And it, this comes up to a question of what is divine, what isn't divine, or what isn't divine? Mm-hmm. You know, what isn't divine about this conversation right now? What isn't divine by all the ears that it's falling upon? 
Because right. I can guarantee you that any ear that is listening to these words has had questions in the last week, day, month, year about the nature of life. Mm-hmm. There's no other way this would be happening. This is simply another way that the beautiful and elegant universe is serving. And it just happens to be me and you in this particular moment, which I am very grateful for, to be a part of this process. But it's irrelevant who it is. The point is, it's happening. The point is, you're being answered. Mm -hmm. This is the quantum field. This is the universe responding. Wow. This is you being heard. It's amazing. That that quote you just said reminded me of Eric Butterworth. I have a book of his called The Universe is Calling. Talks about that same that same notion, but that's so exciting. It tells you that you are always heard. You are it always is. heard, and the universe is here for one purpose and one purpose only, and it is to serve you, the listener of these words, on your journey to mm. a greater and greater experience of I am. Wow. So are you saying that, uh, based off of uh, our conversation thus far, who creates it all? Who's the creator of it all? Are you saying that we have this power, that that we're creating it all, and we're causing it all? From the perspective of your journey and your life, when you become consciously aware of it, you are creating it all. Hmm. You are making all the decisions. Now... The greater I am or the greater consciousness over an infinity of time has produced everything around you, has manifested everything around you. Mm -hmm. So all that's around you is what's been created before you Mm -hmm. that is here for you to choose from as it relates to what you want to create for yourself. Mm. It's amazing. Uh, how do we deal with? Uh, can you talk a bit about? Because you talk in your book about self fulfilling prophecies. Your book is very psychological too. It reminds me of a lot of things that I encounter in my own personal study. Um, uh, self fulfilling pro- Where do self fulfilling prophecies fit at in the conversation? Well, that's uh, self fulfilling prophecy is really a big part of what the book is about because the idea is that whatever you believe. That's the whole point. That's what your ego is here to do. It's mm-hmm. here to go out and take those I am statements, create them, defend them, protect them, and make sure that they're validated in reality so that you can get the experience of them, so that you can take the I and turn it into the experience of am, so that you can take mind mm-hmm. and make it matter. Mm. You can take thought and turn it into reality. Mm-hmm. And the bridge to that is the ego. It's there to serve you in everything so that you believe ego. to be true. So everything you think and believe ends up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, you know, some things take longer to manifest than others, but every thought has an energy to it and depends on how far you carry out that thought to make it real. Mm-hmm. So the ego isn't evil? No, not at all. The ego is actually neutral. It's not good mm-hmm. or bad. It's there to serve you. That's another right. thing that's been taught for, I don't know how many years, that the ego is a bad thing you need to resist or destroy. How could something that, that is a part of you be bad? Right. It, it just needs to be understood. It needs to be understood for what its role is. It's there to protect what you believe to be true, to make sure that who you are gets validated in reality. Wow. And, you know, this conversation is uh, refreshing, folks. You are listening to uh, Unity.fm Radio. I'm Jesse Harriet, and we are talking with Howard Falco. Um, and if you missed uh, this episode or you, you weren't able to get um, all of it, go back and download it for free after 6 p.m. on today. It's compatible with all of your uh, handheld devices. You can even download apps for it. Just go to Unity.fm so that you can listen to it while you're driving in your car. Uh, this is good stuff, and it will help you become more aware of who you are and discover, as the author says, the power of uh, that power that lies inside of you. Um, I'm busy again talking today with a uh, uh, spiritual teacher, counselor, and best-selling author Howard Falco. We have to take a quick commercial break, folks, and uh, we'll continue the conversation right here on Living on Purpose. When we come back. Stay tuned. Today, I stand firmly in my faith. I meet life courageously and confidently, seeing beyond appearances to underlying good. 
Through faith I overcome every limitation. I know that God's power within me is greater than any situation I may have to meet or overcome. God is greater than any condition or circumstance. Through faith, I am fearless and free. This inspirational message is brought to you by Daily Word. Daily Word, inspiration and practical teachings to help people of all faiths live healthy, prosperous, and meaningful lives. Give Daily Word to yourself or a friend and give the gift of hope, joy, peace, and and encouragement. Order your subscriptions today online at dailyword.com. What is the key to happiness? Would you like to find the fountain of youth? How about all the money and love that you could handle? Well, my friends, it is there for you. You just need to strip off the false beliefs that keep your divine inheritance from being attracted into your life. You need to be real. Be vulnerable. Be naked. What are you waiting for? Let's get naked. This transformational program with Rev. Heidi Alfrey is an invitation to explore and remove the blocks that keep you from emotional freedom. Listen to Heidi and her revealing guests as they embrace the power of spiritual nakedness as a guaranteed way to live an authentic and transparent life. Expose yourself to your greatness on Mondays at 3 p.m. Central Time. Let's get naked. No dress code required. Only on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. You gotta get rid of your butt. It's bigger than it would appear. It hinders your forward movement when you keep bringing up the rear. You've been listening to Living on Purpose, where psychology meets spirituality. Now, here is your host, Jesse Harriet. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. We're in our last segment. I'm, I'm Jesse Harriet today, talking with spiritual teacher, counselor, and best-selling author Howard Falco. He is guiding us into uh, discovering this power, you know, of and this notion of who we really are. And where we left off at, we were talking about the ego. So I want to jump back into it, um, just to reiterate. Could you reiterate some of the things you were talking about before we left off? What is the ego, and is it evil at all? And you know? No, the ego is not evil at all. It's the part of you. I use the acronym Energy Goes Out uh, to mm-hmm. describe ego. But basically, it's all the energy, the thoughts, feelings, and actions that go out into your world to protect, defend, create, and validate all the things that you believe to be true about who you are. It is a loyal servant to your truths. And it will protect them till their end, until it finally submits to another truth. So it's there to serve you in every way, shape, or form. And what's interesting about it is when you flare up or you have an emotional outburst or your ego goes into mode to try and um, uh, manipulate the situation back to the way you want it, you're really seeing what the truths are that you believe about who you are that the ego is desperately trying to protect in some way. And so at least it leads you, if you become conscious of what your ego is doing for you, it leads you to what you believe to be true. And until you know what you believe to be true, you can't change it. So one of the ways that I offer people to become more aware about what's driving their life or their situation if they don't want it is to watch how their ego goes into mode to protect certain things about themselves because that's where the issue might be. Mm. So the ego, it is that self... Are are you saying that the ego is this self-preservation aspect of who we are or... It's, it's what takes your thoughts and turns them into a reality that you can experience. I'm a, I'm a good husband, okay? And uh-huh. if that is not being validated, if I'm not feeling that, then my ego is going to take me to the store to get some flowers so that I can come home and get that experience of being a good husband. Or I'm going to walk in the door and put my arms around my wife and give her a big hug and kiss to get the feedback back that I'm a good husband. Or I'm going to ask her when I see that she's not feeling well, what's wrong, what can I do for you, how can I help you feel better, 
in order to get the experience back that I need that says I'm a good husband when I'm feeling like I'm not. If I'm feeling fine that I am, then there's really nothing to do. Or, you know, I'm a good employee or, uh, at my job. Well, how do, if I'm feeling insecure about that, if that truth is, hasn't been realized, then I'm going to find a way to go talk to my boss or to, or to, or to get some feedback that tells me that I'm a good employee. Mm. So and if someone your- challenges me on, on something I'm wearing and I think I'm a good dresser or I think I'm fashionable and they say, that, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen, what's my ego going to do? It's going to jump into huge protection mode. What do you know about fashion? And who made you the authority? And how, can you, how dare you talk that way to me? And I don't even like what you're wearing. And, you know, all the different <laughs> ways that ego jumps in there to say, wait a minute, I'm okay. <laughs> my, right. I want to protect that thought that I'm okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what happens when we don't get that validation, when that ego, in a sense, can't fulfill its purpose? It, it, to, to, to say that it I don't goes into a more saying. active mode, right? The more it can't fulfill the purpose, the more it goes into an active mode. Now, eventually, it might have to face a bigger truth that what we believed mm-hmm. is no longer true, and mm-hmm. that's the, that's the that's the point of submission to something to a greater truth. Okay, wow. we fight, we mm-hmm. fight. He loves me, he loves me, she loves me, she loves me, she loves me. And my ego tries to get it, tries to get it, and finally, it's got to submit to the truth that they don't love me anymore. But until that happens, we're going to suffer as our ego desperately tries to make that a reality, even though it's not anymore. But the only freedom comes from the acceptance of it, because finally the ego doesn't have to work so hard and drain us of every ounce of energy we have, because we've finally accepted it, and then we can move on and now create something new for ourselves. Right. We're not paddling upstream, and we're learning through exactly. insight and revelation instead of through suffering. Exactly. We're accepting truth wow. and getting into the flow. Mm -hmm. Getting into the flow, this is good. So I want to move on in the conversation. Um, How do we handle what we perceive to be past mistakes and failures? Right. Well, I'm glad you said perceived to be past mistakes and failures. In my world, there's no such thing as a mistake or a failure. Mm -hmm. There's only learning experiences. Right. Because a mistake indicates that you should have or could have done something better. And the only truth is what you did. That is the only thing that's true. And obviously, you acted to the best of your ability. I don't care what you knew in your mind. What you produced through your actions was the best you had in that moment. So the quicker you realize that it was a learning experience, the less you'll beat yourself up about it, the less your I am's will lead to a sense of I'm not worthy or I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough, which is all a lie, the less it will recreate it for you. The more you say, okay, that's who I was. It's not who I am. I get to choose now based on that information. Do I want to make that choice again? No, because I'm honoring something greater about myself. So everything is a learning experience. Now, some people, unfortunately, go through a lot of learning experiences because mm-hmm. they're very resistant to truth. But that's their journey. The key is not to take on any guilt, shame, or regret because that's really, truly poison. Mm. Is how, what are some practices that you implement, that you teach others about, um, to help them um, embrace these truths? Because it sounds like you're talking about um, there's a conversation that goes on within us, and we have the thought processes, but then embodying this, this information. You know, like you said, you did the best that you could at that moment, even though you might have had, you know, the thoughts. Like, okay, I know I, I could. Like, there's this war going on in, in, inside of you. You understand what I'm saying? How yeah, do but you the war practice? is based on a lie. See, the war is based on a lie. The lie is, I knew that. I should have done better. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're not acknowledging what the truth is. The truth is, that was the best you had. That doesn't mean you can't make a better choice now, in this moment, the only right. moment you ever have. But you have to acknowledge that the choice you made, I don't care how much you knew intellectually, mm-hmm. that was the best that you had. And until you well, accept I- that... And realize that one of the most beautiful things about life is your ability to choose anew in this moment, to Mm -hmm. redefine who you are in this moment. Now you can choose something different. Now you can finally learn from that and choose something different. So the process to doing this, it's based on how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to manifest what you want? Right. How bad do you want to shake the old version of yourself and stop continuing to live the lie? Or continuing to live an old version of who you were that didn't produce what you want? How much are you willing to step into a new idea of who you are, no matter how uncomfortable it may seem at first, and start to make new choices? 
Wow, this is real. This is as they say, the young people say real talk. <laughs> this is a re- this is real conversation, sir. This this is good stuff um, because you know it's freeing and it's liberating. You know what? Even because you can beat yourself up and say, you know what? I should have did this, or I knew this. I knew one plus one equals two. But you know, at that moment, all I had was like, it, this is what I had in me, and it it makes you be honest with yourself, like you said, and it frees you. It's very very liberating. It does not mean that you condone anything you did in the past, especially if it was right. harmful. It's not about condoning right. it. It's right. about liberating yourself from the negative mindset that created it mm-hmm. so that you do not recreate it. Right. So what is karma? Karma is the current circumstances that are based on past choices and actions. Mm-hmm. Karma is the result of all of who you thought that you were that led to the experience that you're now having. Mm. And it can be positive or it can be negative. Because you talk about karma in your book as well. Mm -hmm. This is, wow. You know, and you're creating karma in this moment. So, Mm -hmm. yes, so so let's talk about that. So you might decide to redefine who you are right now. Mm -hmm. And you've changed. And you know you're a different person now. The only way to, to, to... to go about that and to validate that is to demonstrate it, right? Now, mm-hmm. the world, the people in your life who've known you for 20 years as somebody else, they have learned how to survive around you based on who you were. So they are going to continue to treat you based on who you were. Right. So the karma of your past identity is going to be in the way they treat you, even though you change. Now, eventually what happens is the longer you stay in the new version, the more they will adjust and tune themselves to the new version of who you are. And finally, that karma will be gone, and they will treat you now as a renewed individual. But you cannot uh, manipulate them into it. You can't expect them. You have to just wait for the world, the people around you, to adjust when they're ready to adjust. But that should not stop you from being who you want to be. I use the Mm -hmm. example of like a dog you get from, you know, we, we uh, we rescued our dog from a shelter. And so when you raised your hand up to pet the dog, the dog would shy away. Because in its past experience, whatever the past owners were, that was obviously a hand up was not a good thing. Well, eventually, over time, with the dog realizing that every time we raised our hand, we were going to give love and to pet and to hug, eventually the dog stopped shying away and started coming Mm -hmm. towards the hand, but because it needed to readjust itself to the new experience. So that's a little tie into karma as it relates to, you know, who you're demonstrating yourself to be. Mm. We only have a couple minutes left in the show, folks. Um, if you missed um, a bulk of the show, go back and download it. Um, just go to www.unity.fm and click on um, the, uh, Living on Purpose with Jesse Herod and look for the episode at the top. It'll say Howard Falco, special guest. Click on Download MP3. As I suggested earlier, it's compatible with all your devices. So um, to <clears throat> go into um, some of your own practices, what are some practices that you implement um, on a daily basis, uh, do you meditate, or uh, what? What are your rituals to help that help you? You know, uh, it, to help you. You know, <laughs> very, very, yeah. I'm very, very yeah. conscious. Like I mentioned in the book many times, I'm very, very conscious about my state of mind, my physiology, my energy, because that's mm-hmm. telling me when I'm in resistance with my world or when I'm in acceptance with it. The more mm-hmm. acceptance I'm in with it, the more faith I have, the more powerful I know that what I desire and intend to experience is on its way to manifesting for me through the conditions because that faith has power in it. That belief carries power. So I, when I'm in resistance, when I'm in suffering, I acknowledge it quickly. I see the lie that's sponsoring the suffering, and I reframe the thought. I say to myself, that's not true. That's what I used to believe. That's why you know, uh, I'm feeling that suffering, but that's not true about who I am. Who I am is X, Y, and Z, and then I implement that, and then I go and demonstrate that, either with a phone call or, or, or the way that I'm acting or the way I treat somebody. And I continue to live in the new version of who I am in a very powerful way. So I'm very conscious of my own behavior, which allows me to find any thought that is stretching time for me as it relates to what I desire. Mm-hmm. So it can happen quicker. There's an exercise at the end of the book. Um, there's an I am worksheet in there that allows people to lay out what they want, their I am statements, and then actions they can take to make sure that they're living through those I am statements so that the conditions are constantly being generated in the world. Mm-hmm. 
uh, Howard, how can we get a hold of you um, for those that want more information and want to really sure. jump into these teachings? How can we get a hold of you? Sure. Well, there's two places. I have a website. It's uh, www.howardfalco, H-O-W-A-R-D-F-A-L-C-O.com. I do private session work. If somebody wants um, something on a more powerful private level, they can call me for that. Um, I do talks from time to time. My uh, schedule is up there so they can see where I'm speaking or, or talking or on the radio. Um, and, of course, the book is available everywhere books are sold or on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or any independent bookseller. Um, people can pick it up. It's available for any format, Kindle, um, Apple, etc. Mm-hmm. So those are the way. They also, there's a, there's a website for the book also. It's www.thebookiam.com. And on that website, you can read more of the introduction. You can see there's a video up there, and it leads to all my sites. I'm available on Facebook. You can connect with me on Facebook under my name as well. So those are the areas. Well, thank you so much, Howard, for the transformative work you're doing. I mean, we hope you'll keep us posted on your upcoming events and appearances and come back, you know, and, and we'll jump back into the conversation a little more and just to get to the next level. Um, his latest project, folks, is the powerful bestseller, I Am, The Power of Discovering Who You Really Are. It's available, as he said, at your favorite online retailer and in physical bookstores around the country. You can also follow this dynamic feature online via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or by Googling his name directly at www.howardfalco.com. That's our show this week, folks, and thanks again for tuning in to Living on Purpose at Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Peace and blessings to you, and remember to live on purpose. Thank you for tuning in to Living on Purpose, where psychology meets spirituality with Jesse Harriet. Listen in live every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Time for more insights into psychology, ancient wisdom, and how it connects to your life today. Living on Purpose, only on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. This program is brought to you in part by www.jesseharriet.com, where psychology meets spirituality. Connect with us on Facebook and YouTube. Keyword search, Jesse Harriet. Music Speaks Louder Than Words is an inspiring, informative, and fun hour of uplifting, heartfelt music and commentary that delivers a powerful message of love, joy, and oneness. It will keep you smiling and singing along. Your host, Dale Worley, is alive with the Spirit of God each Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, with Music Speaks Louder Than Words. Music, it's the only thing that the whole world listens to. Music Speaks Inspiration only takes a moment. As Reverend Felicia Blanco Circe points out in her book, Do Greater Things, there is the potential for joy, wholeness, and expansiveness designed into every moment. And the miracle is when we recognize the constant presence of these qualities all around us. Once we see what is possible, our lives then begin to change. This meditative moment is brought to you by Unity.